हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट द इम्पॉर्टेंट जियोग्राफिकल फिजियोग्राफिक डिविजन्स ऑफ इंडिया इंडिया इज अ फिजिकली डाइवर्स कंट्री इंडिया हैज सिक्स डिविजन्स बेस्ड ऑन द कंट्रीज डाइवर्स फिजियोग्राफिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स दे आर नॉर्दर्न माउंटेन्स नॉर्दर्न प्लेन्स इंडियन डिजर्ट पेनसुलर प्लेट्यू कोस्टल प्लेन्स एंड द आईलैंड्स एंड द मैप हियर shows the regions that are covered under this physiographic divisions the first most important physiographic division of india is northern mountains they were formed by the collision of indian and eurasian tectonic plates they act as the origins of many of the rivers that flow through indo gangetic plains these northern mountains consists of himalayas hindu kush and patkai ranges in india the most important range is the Himalayan range since the Hindu Kush lies in Afghanistan and Pakistan region while the Patkai range lies in Indo Myanmar border now let's discuss in detail about the great himalayan mountains it is the world's highest mountain range the highest peak of the world mount everest is situated in this area these himalayan mountains spreads into seven states like jammu and kashmir पंजाब हिमाचल प्रदेश उत्तरांचल वेस्ट बंगाल सिक्किम एंड अरुणाचल प्रदेश द हिमालय आर वन ऑफ द यंगेस्ट फोल्ड माउंटेन रेंजेस इन द वर्ल्ड एंड कंप्रेजेस मेनली द सेडिमेंट्री रॉक्स दे अलोंग विद द एसोसिएटेड रेंजेस इन द नॉर्थ वेस्ट एंड नॉर्थ ईस्ट फ्रॉम द नॉर्थन बाउंड्री ऑफ इंडिया एक्सटेंडिंग फ्रॉम जम्मू एंड काश्मीर एंड लडाख इन नॉर्थ टू अरुणाचल प्रदेश इन नॉर्थ ईस्ट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ एन आर्क The total length of this chain is about five hundred five thousand kilometers, of which about two thousand five hundred kilometers stretch in the form of an arc along the Indian border. The Indus Valley and Brahmaputra Valley are taken as the western and eastern limits, respectively, of the Himalayas within India. The breadth of the Himalayas mountains varies from one fifty to four hundred kilometers, and the average height of the whole region is taken as about two thousand meters. The elevation of the Himalayan chain more or less decreases eastwards. The Himalayas comprise a number of almost parallel ranges. As pointed out earlier, the westernmost and the easternmost limits of the Himalayas proper in India are marked by Indus Valley and Brahmaputra Valley respectively. The mountainous region to the west of the Indus Valley is often called as Trans Himalayas, while the hilly region to the east of the Brahmaputra Valley is called Purvanchal. The Himalayan mountains is made up of four parallel ranges namely Greater Himalayas Lesser Himalayas Shivaliks and the Trans Himalayas The Greater Himalayas it is also called as Inner Himalayas or Himadri and also called as Central Himalayas This is the northern most range of Himalayan system and it is also the highest about 25 km width it is the source region of many rivers and glaciers and its mountains reach an average height of 6000 meters mount everest or sagarmatha the highest mountain peak in the world lies in this range mount everest in nepal is called as sagarmatha the other important peaks of this range are karakoram which is of 8611 meters kanchenjunga which is of 8598 meters makalu and dhaulagiri The south facing slope of the greater Himalayan range is steeper than the northern slope. Granite, gneisses and schists are the chief rocks forming this range. Most of these rocks have been metamorphosed due to extreme compression and folding. Rivers Ganga, Yamuna, Gandak, Ghaghra, Indus, Kosi originates from these ranges. The next important range is the lesser himalayas which is also called as himachal this range extends to the south of the central himalayas it is also known as middle himalayas this range is broader than the greater himalayas but its height is lower average height of the mountains here is about 1800 meters and the breadth varies from 80 to 100 kilometers this range was uplifted at a slow rate and the rivers rising from the greater himalayas have cut deep gorges in this section the main central thrust zone lies between this range and the central himalayas dhauladhar 
Nagriva, Pirpanjal and Mahabharata are the important ranges in this zone. Hill stations like Shimla, Dalhousi, Darjeeling, Chakrata, Musori, Nainatal etc. lies in this lesser Himalayas. And the valleys like Kashmir, Kulu, Kangra etc. also lies in this lesser Himalayas. Sivaliks are the outer Himalayas. This is the third and the lowest range of the system lying further south of the uh, former lesser and greater Himalayas. This range is also known as outer Himalayas. The main boundary thrust separates this range from the lesser or the middle Himalayas. The length of this range between Portwar Basin in the west and Tista River in the east is about 2400 kilometers. The breadth or the width of the Sivalik range varies between 10 and 50 kilometers and its average is, a height is about 900 to 1100 meters. The newest range of Himalayas, it separates the plains from the alluvial filled basins called Duns and Duars. Valleys lying between Sivalai and Lesser Himalayas are called Duns like Dehradun, Kotlidun and Patlidun. This range has been formed most recently and the rocks in this zone have been derived from the debris deposited by the Himalayan rivers and glaciers. The Sivalik range extends only in the western part of the Himalayas and in the eastern part this range is believed to have been eroded and buried in alluvium. Due to this fact, the high mountain ranges appear to be rising abruptly from the plains in the eastern part. North of the Great Himalayas lie the Trans Himalayas or the Tibet Himalayas. These Himalayas are called as Tibet Himalayas because most of its part lies in Tibet. This range acts as a watershed between rivers flowing to the north and those flowing to the south. The Tibetan Himalayas is about 40 kilometers wide and rises to heights of 3000 to 4300 meters. And ranges in this Himalayas are Kailash Range, Jaskar Range, Ladakh and Karakoram. The next is Purvanchal Hills. These are also known as Eastern Himalayas. These hills extend from Arunachal Pradesh in the north to Mizoram in south. This range acts as a border of India and Myanmar. The most fundamental of regional divisions of Himalayas divides this mountain system into two parts, the Western Himalayas and the Eastern Himalayas. The western part of the Himalayas is considered the dry region, while the eastern part is the humid region. These two divisions of the Himalayas are identified rather arbitrarily. According to more logical regional divisions, the mountain region is divided into Punjab Himalayas, Kuman Himalayas, Nepal Himalayas and the Assam Himalayas. Punjab Himalayas stretches between Indus and Sutlas rivers and its length is about 562 km from west to east. These are the westernmost part of the Himalayas. And the Kumon Himalayas stretches between Sutlas and Kali rivers. And its length is about 320 kilometers. It lies to the east of the Punjab Himalayas. And then the Nepal Himalayas. These, stretch, these Himalayas stretches between Kali and Tista rivers. And the length of the Nepal Himalayas is about 800 kilometers. And this is the highest peak, the highest peaks lie in this Nepal Himalayas zone. And the Assam Himalayas, this Himalayas stretches between Tista and Brahmaputra rivers and its length is about 750 kilometers. These Assam Himalayas are the easternmost part of the Himalayas. The second important physiological division is Northern Plains. These Northern Plains lie between the south of Himalayas and the north of the Peninsular Plateau. These plains passes through states like Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal, Assam, Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh. These northern plains are formed by alluvial deposition from Indus, Ganges and Brahmaputra rivers. Since these rivers basins had a huge amount of alluvial deposits from their glacial rivers, crops such as wheat, rice, sugarcane, cotton, maize are grown here. So these northern plains are also known as Indo-Gangetic Brahmaputra plain and these plains are very high fertile and suitable for agriculture. These plains spread over a area of 
seven lakh square square kilometers, and the length is about two two thousand four hundred kilometers. The width varies from one forty five kilometers to four eighty kilometers. The northern plains are further classified into Punjab plains, Ganga plains, and Brahmaputra plains. Punjab plain is also called as the Indus plain. These are the westernmost part of the plain. The general slope of the Punjab plains is towards the west and southwest. And these plains covers Punjab, Haryana, and Rajasthan states. Then the central part; those are Ganga plains. And this slope, general slope, is towards east. The Ganga plains covers states like Haryana, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal, and partly Jharkhand. The third classification is Brahmaputra plains. These are the easternmost part of the plains, and the general slope of the Brahmaputra plains is towards west and south. And these covers these plains covers eastern part of India, particularly. Assam state the further division of northern plains is bhabar terai bhangar and kadar bhabar belt this belt begins at the foothills of the shivalik range in the map shown the blue part is a, is the bhabar belt this belt is running in east west direction along shivaliks bhabar belt is of 8 to 16 kilometers wide Due to porosity in nature, with pebbles and rocks, the streams flow underground in this region. What is the meaning of porosity? In simple language, porosity is, are the empty spaces within the rocks. Bhabar belt is narrow in east and extensive in western and northwestern hilly regions, and this belt is not suitable for agriculture. The next one is Terai belt. It is towards the south of the Babar Plains, and the Terai Belt is of 15 to 30 kilometers wide. This belt is of wet and marshy grassland region with thick vegetation. Streams and rivers re-emerge in this belt, and these soils are rich in nitrogen and humus content. Sugarcane, rice, wheat crops are grown in this Terai Belt. The next one is Bangar Belt. This belt is the largest area of the northern plains. The term bangar is applied to areas of old alluvium deposits. And this belt lie above the flat plains of the rivers and have formed in the terrace like structure and stretches along the river channels. Soil is composed of calcareous deposits. In local in local language we call it as kankar. and in this belt water table is generally high what is water table the water table is an underground boundary between the soil surface and the area where ground water saturates spaces between sediments and cracks in rock and the water pressure and the atmospheric pressure are equal at this boundary the last belt is khadar belt these are found by new or younger alluvial soil and this belt stretch farther from river channels soil is very high fertile in this kadar belt and it is almost renewed every year in this belt water table is lower so these are the two important physical divisions of india and the remaining four physiological divisions we will discuss in the next video thank you